you for inviting me. Um, I, my name is Holly Wood. I am CEO and founder of Hollywood Labs. And my background is 20 years in the creative industries. Um, I started my uh, career in fashion way back when, actually as a stylist for the independent newspaper. Um, but I studied fashion and marketing in particular. But when the kind of Web3 space emerged, I actually flipped my whole script into Web3 um, because I thought the opportunity to work with new emerging technologies was super exciting. Um, and I've always really been on the side of the creator, um, looking for those opportunities for uh, where their work can be seen by different audiences, um, where they can have like more reach and pushing boundaries and having conversations they're interested in. Um, so I've worked uh, a little bit in different education institutions like Central St. Martins. Um, and yeah, so my background is pretty broad in terms of like covering fashion, art, music, interiors. Uh, but now it's kind of come full circle and I'm more focused on the digital fashion space now, I would say, um, so to the extent we're ho hosting the next Future Fashion Summit in Paris this Friday, which we're really excited about. It's a business to business event and the whole premise for it is to introduce luxury fashion houses to digital fashion brands. The first one we hosted during NFT Paris in February. Um, and we had an incredible response and pretty much every luxury house was in the room um, and Steffi was there which was amazing um, and we really really want to support those active conversations with actual outcomes um, so I'll hand over to Steffi to say hi um, and then I'd love to hear a little bit about all of you. Hi all, I'm Steffi and yes, we did have an amazing event that Holly hosted in Paris, and it was just wonderful to see a mixture of digital fashion companies and brands and physical fashion brands come together. So as an introduction, I am a digital fashion artist. I like to call myself a creator at best, designer, artist, creator, kind of all of those three in one, I would say. I am currently working on building my own digital fashion brand and I create a lot of digital fashion NFTs and I suppose I've recently dabbled into turning my digital pieces into a physical piece which has been very exciting and I also not only do I want to focus on building the bridge between physical and digital but also exploring more of the, the digital roots whether that's showing digital fashion with an AR with augmented reality or showcasing it in a metaverse if you guys go on the central land or sandbox you know how can it be implemented by gaming I think digital fashion is a super exciting industry just because there's just so much potential in where you can bring it and I guess aside from me just making all of these artworks and designs I also put a lot of videos of my process I share my process on social media you guys might have seen some and I just like sharing, sharing the process just because I'm such a, I'm such an active learner I learned a lot of my skills from online and so I think it's super helpful for me to show my process so that people or more designers I would say come into the space and also do what I'm doing That's so cool, Debbie. I love hearing that that's kind of your motivation for sharing your process on social media. It was definitely kind of something I was super drawn to, like the fact that everything is so open source and it is collaborative. And it's amazing like, that Nicole and Danny are creating these cohorts. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. And I would love to hear a bit about some of you, if anyone wants to share, because I know this session mostly is around developing your network. And for me to kind of like understand the context of like who was it, what's the network that you're kind of most interested in developing? Is it kind of, um, and when we're talking about networks, we might be thinking um, of direct consumer, or are you kind of thinking actually I would love to do collaborations with certain brands and how do I begin that journey? Um, so, yeah, is anyone? open to kind of like sharing a bit more specifically around how they want to grow their network or who they're kind of like trying to target.
um, please feel free to come up on stage, unmute, and uh, speak about yourselves. This is a great opportunity for you guys to market yourselves and, you know, speak to other, like, individuals in this space, right? So, very excited to have you guys speak about yourselves. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's so good to have all of you here, Stephanie and Holly. Uh, I'm, I'm an architect of Metaverse for two years, and since the uh, NF NPCs and avatars uh, become quite important in the space uh, and they become a part of the architecture, I started interested in uh, avatars. Uh, what I'm doing now, since the beginning of the residency, is to design uh, avatars with the new techniques and the new thoughts that I learned. And uh, it's called, uh, it was a Digisapiens at first sight, but uh, I, I knew, I, I learned that it was taken. Uh, so I changed it to Click to Veer collection that I'm uh, hoping to make a runway show live in Metaverse. Uh, yeah. And Decentralize, are you thinking about this the Avatar um, series being accessible in specific metaverses, or are these all just within your own ecosystem? Uh, so, uh, since uh, they are like VRMs, and most of the platforms uh, mechanically support VRMs, uh, yeah. they can be uh, used in anywhere. But uh, I see there's like uh, that conversation in digital fashion, like if we need to, you know, mint them as, uh, as uh, sculptures or put them on social medias to, uh, you know, make them serve as AR filters. Or in Avatar's case, it's more like uh, how we can use it, is it usable on chain? Because uh, if you uh, give people uh, like a JPEG of it as a profile picture and then let it download from another source, which doesn't mix it on chain, it is quite problematic. But uh, minting uh, VRM Avatar's on chain with a hidden meta data is quite possible. So and uh, all the avatars are usable uh, in across any platforms that support uh, special avatars. So it would be then um, decentralized that the avatars, I'm just thinking about how to monetize or how you're thinking of monetizing this um, project. So the idea is then that the avatars could be accessible or for sale in Spatial, for instance, um, and different metaverses, and that you would want to be able to purchase the avatar itself? Or are you thinking, actually, I want to speak to someone like the Sandbox about um, having my avatar available in their marketplace? I mean, in the case, case of Sandbox, uh, they are uh, quite different than the other uh, platforms. So yeah. these avatars wouldn't be usable in sandbox because they are requiring different format. But yeah. uh, like in special or Mona, Hyperfy, um, Sonium Space, like most of them, all of them uh, can, can be usable and you know buy and sold via OpenSea uh, or Manifold or anywhere since it, or Zora because it's on chain and. Uh, since uh, when you uh, connect your wallet, you can list it on anywhere as you wish. And it has VRM uh, file itself inside of the uh, contract. So buying and selling it, it's also uh, using it uh, from on-chain. So, in, in terms of like developing your network specifically, though, to be able to do this or support that journey, I think a lot of that will probably be fairly open to you anyway, but I would I would say that connecting with the different teams, is, is this something that you've done already? Are you are you actively kind of like reaching out to the teams at Spatial and Solnium? Uh, I'm, since I'm like mostly living in Metaverse since two years, and 
uh, I, I knew those uh, people like from spaces and every uh, like occasionally or stumbling upon them in a random place. So I know uh, most of the founders or some artists that they do uh, avatars for marketplaces such as uh, Metromundo or Mona. Uh, how they operate, how they uh, connect and create network for themselves and like following the new projects also in that direction. So I've, I've been in dialogue with them before even starting this uh, operation. So uh, they will help me, of course, but it's uh, not like competitional uh, uh, text, textile uh, for them. Yeah, and uh, and also it's like quite small amount of people who are uh, able to uh, let's say use this technology in metaverse um, actively. It's like small group of people, and I, I think I have a reach uh, to them. Yeah, I, I was gonna have Marcella and Jenny, and while well, they're up here as well, about what they're working on, and hear a little bit about your projects. Thank you so much for uh, asking questions. Amazing. Of course. Um, I think we still have Marcella and Janie. I know. Yeah, sure, Janie, go for it. Oh, okay, okay. Hi, I'm Janie. I don't know if my connection is good, but. Um... So um, I'm currently working on I'm working on two pieces actually. I'm going to make I'm working on two pieces from the collection that I'm working on for a very long time. Just with the design of flow, and I'm going to make like an animation with them. But it's more focused on the pieces because after this work you can see and after the event I'm going to start my brand. So it will be like a launch pieces for the collection. So I'm very excited about that. It has to do with Nigerian fashion, with the markets and you know like the classic or equivalent of like Western silhouettes or you know it's a mixture of both of them and the entire inspiration behind the collection is working with contrast and things like that. So it's very flamboyant like Nigerian fashion usual use. Well, it's also very classic and um, yeah, it's just a big mixture like of both of those. So um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to keep um, digitizing the entire collection. I really love seeing things that are inspired by my culture and always inspired by Nigerian cultures. So I try to put that in my work as much as possible. Um, yeah, that's that's what I have so far. Jamie, do you have a time when you're going to be launching your collection? Uh, so I plan to do it around December, but that really does depend on how long it will take to digitize the entire collection. But it's already it's ready. I've done it by sketches and things like that. So I just need to digitize it because I want my brand to be a digital brand where I mean, everything is made to order, but it's going to be all digitized first and then, yeah. It will present them in a digital way and then you order from them. So that's the idea. But if, if there isn't enough time, maybe next year will be a better time. Uh, um, one thing I've always wanted to work on was Art Times Lagos. Have you seen that event? I think it's like November or December every year. Mm -hmm. It's like X Lagos. Um, and I think piggybacking on like, these major cultural moments is really. A, a great way to kind of put yourself into a bigger like audience um, and Art Times Lagos they actually did something with Super Rare two years ago so they are kind of very open to like Web3 and NFTs um, so Art Times Lagos I think could be a really great place for you to launch your collection. I think we lost you. Go 
first week is go for um London uh, sorry Vegas Fashion Week, which is the well okay there's Vegas Fashion Week this October, but I'm also going for this um Vegas Fashion Weekend in November. So I plan to hear some of my pieces there and that's where I I think that will also be a good week to um introduce myself to my children mainstream fashion world. But yeah, I'm excited about that. Amazing, that sounds perfect. Um, then there's two yeah. twin sisters um, that are based in Lagos um, who are amazing fashion photographers. Um, yeah. They create illustration as well, but they also take photography. Um, and I always, again, I kind of like think doing things in collaboration also helps to kind of like grow your network. Um, so if I can find them, I'll send them to you. Yeah, I really love that. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you for telling us about your project. If you have any questions, Joni, just let us know. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I also want to say, I've seen Steffi's work. I came across an ad a couple months ago on Instagram and I saw the work for, um, it was for domestic hiking. And I'm really fascinated by it, honestly. I think it's so cool. Especially with the, um, you can you can very much see the tradition, the cultural inspiration behind most of the work. I think that obviously it resonates a lot with me because I am also pushing on the culture uh, through fashion and art. So I just I really really yeah, I just want to say that. Thank you. I mean, yeah, when you were speaking, when you said you were, your work is all about culture, I was just thought, well, that's just like me. And I think, you know, with digital fashion, it's really like an opportunity to showcase who you are. And because I, I the reason why I'm so adamant about showcasing my culture, um, mm -hmm. the British Chinese culture in my work, is because I wasn't even, I wasn't able to show that in my previous industries that I used to work in. That was in, in graphic design and in 3D motion design. And so with digital fashion, it's all about expression. It's all about showcasing who you are, your confidence and your character. So I think, you know, what you're doing is great. We need to hear more of people's stories, which I think is fantastic. And yeah, thank you so much for <laughs> for the kind support on my video. No, thank you so much. Of course, if you've got any more questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer as well. Oh, yeah, for now, that's it, but as you do this, and I'll definitely come up with some questions. Sure thing. And Marcella, we would love to hear from you if you're there. Hi, guys, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right, perfect. <laughs> so basically, um, I'm a digital fashion designer, but for the project, I was kind of starting to develop um a collection that tells a story about myself because i feel like doing the work for um in the industry i was always like creating under you know um some other creative direction and basically i think i agree with uh, what Safi said that digital fashion is a huge opportunity to showcase more about yourself and i think that's uh, what I want to do. So basically, I'm developing like uh, three or four digital looks that will be showcased as a format of a just like a play, a theater play that tells the story about how I deal with my. I was basically I was diagnosed with OCD when I was a little girl, and this like interfered a lot in my life, especially with um, creative thinking. Um, for those of you who don't know what is OCD, it's basically like um, compulsive disorders with repetitions and stuff, and these like follow me through my whole journey, creative journey, especially with ballet. I used to dance, and with choreography, we basically had just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And during my um, creative journey as a stylist or working inside the fashion industry and now as a digital fashion designer, I have always like deal with some sort of repetitions during this. And I wanted to show more about this to create more awareness for mental health inside the creative environment. I think that would be very um, cool so people can know more about me so that the project can be relatable, fashionable, of course. 
but I really wanted to do something that shows um, a little bit more about me rather than just doing, I don't know, just like some ideas, very beautiful ones, but with no, you know, no me very meaningful stuff. But I'm kind of like struggling now to um, where I can like showcase this after our presentation or maybe, I don't know, yeah, like the best um, marketplace to showcase because it's some sort of performative. So Marcella, um, I was going to ask, what's your Instagram handle? My Instagram is um, Castelli with the yeah. L N I and M A A. It's Castelli Ma. And I can I can type here in the chat. Let me let me see. Okay, yeah, I found you. So, and is that the name of your brand, Castelli M A A? No, 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 it's not. Okay, so one thing that I found, so when you were talking, I went straight to look for you on Instagram because I'm such a visual person, I always want to be able to see the work. And I typed in Castelli, uh, Marcella Castelli and I couldn't see you straight away. And so I don't know whether um, Instagram, I can see you've got like um, a hand... Um, scripted name i'm wondering if there's an issue with like how you're being picked up because they that you should have come up as it's not the name of your handle that they pick up as well as it it's the actual name so i'm just curious as to why because if you type in uh, uh, it won't work for you obviously <laughs> but, uh, when i looked at yeah marcella castelli it was like 10 and this is it. this is how I search for people all the time. If I know their name, I go to the name, and your your name is you know kind of unusual. And I kind of thought I'm going to find you straight away, but there was like twenty people with the same name, and no one normally I'll look for like okay followed by like we have people in common, um, and I can see we have got people in common, and that means that's a really quick way for me to go okay that is that yeah. person. Mm -hmm. Um, so that might be one just to kind of, and I'm going to click follow it now, um, that might just be something to look out for because I, I think Instagram is still, personally I still think it's like the best visual way to kind of showcase your work. Your feed looks really nice, it's really okay. nice curated and I'm always like for artists, whether it's visual artists or fashion designers, I'm always looking for like a consistency of tone and voice in the creative output. I think it's great to have experimentation and um, see different kind of styles. But for me, like if I've been doing curation, I found that kind of confusing in the past. So actually the fact that it's a very coherent feed is really, really strong. And it also, I'm also really interested in it straight away, like particularly this blue image, the pale blue hair, it looks amazing. Thank um, you. So I would, personally, I would say, say Instagram. Steffi, I'd love to hear what you think about in terms of like your experience with Instagram and showing your process, like you were saying, in reels. Like, I'm, it, have you got, it looks like maybe you don't have, oh no, you do have reels. Okay. But yeah, I'll let Steffi chat about it. Yeah, sure. I mean, the best way to showcase your work as a visual artist is definitely social media. Um, I would agree, Instagram is one of the best places to to show it, especially whenever I go to networking events or I go to like certain events and meet new people. I don't even show them my website. I always show them Instagram because it's just the quickest way for people to see and you can click through all the images or videos and reels really quickly and get an idea of what they do. So that is my go-to for sure. I mean, I utilize social media so heavily because it's really the way that I get eyes on my work, not just from people who admire my work, but also for clients. So if you're thinking of, um, 
there's a difference of choosing where to sell your work and there's a different place to market your work and I think social media is really key for anyone who does digital work so uh, I highly recommend utilizing reels I think images are great but as the rise with TikTok and Instagram reels YouTube shorts everyone's attention span is like a goldfish now unfortunately and so you probably would like to research on how to do video editing or how to make your work um i would say more more so like animation i know that it includes animation is a is a lot harder than just creating a still image of your piece so even that just requires some research but i think as a whole instagram reels is probably and tiktok i i wouldn't uh Put TikTok down. TikTok is one of the fastest growing platforms as well for you to, for any creator to grow actually compared to Instagram. So I would definitely utilize those two the most if you want to get more people um, seeing your work and also finding other people who also do similar things to you um, really helps as well because a lot of times the way that I get people to see my new collections or even hear about me is actually word of mouth. So having social media and having people being able to share your work to their contacts, to a creative director is, is uh, yeah, super helpful. Thank you, <laughs> that uh, makes total sense. And yeah, I'm just trying to like, thinking on uh, the best ways to work with Instagram and, and of course heels, I know, <laughs> I just have to like, Things and work more on animations because I know at the end of the day they perform better. But yeah, thank you guys. I was done as well, Marcella, just scrolling through your feed. I think there's some classic kind of examples here of like you probably don't know how lucky you are to have some of the assets that you've got, and you've probably thought like creatively, you're probably like 10 miles ahead of everyone else. Whereas actually a lot of your older content is actually still very relevant and really, really strong. So I would be really consistent about some of the stuff that could potentially be quite viral. It might be very, feel very basic and very simple to you. You know, where you're just like playing around with little bat wing ears um, and things like that. But it makes for great content. It's really attention grabbing. Um, and there isn't very much of you in the top half of your feed. Like um, Steffi says, I use Instagram in exactly the same way I use that as my portfolio. It's kind of like, I just need those first nine blocks to be the thing that you can kind of, obviously people do go down a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was, it, I would like to see a little bit more about you. I could definitely, I'd love to hear more about your story on your feed and like get a better, quicker sense of, Okay, who is Marcella? Where are you in the world? Um, I can see the work, which is brilliant, but I would like to know a little bit more about you. And I think Instagram could be a really cool place to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, I will work on that. Because sometimes I just feel like uh, people want to see just the work or don't have time to you know, stop scrolling and read something, but that totally makes sense, especially um, to showcase my future work. So it's, thank it's, you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a bit like the way that, like, you might love watching the Diesel show, but you'd also then go and look at Glenn Martin's own personal feed. You know, you kind of yeah, yeah. You know about the designer. You want to know the behind the scenes. Um and yeah, I, I would definitely lean into some of those kind of viral moments or opportunities. Like there's, there's a lot of potential in your work to have like a viral moment. So it'd be very, in terms of like your network growth, I would be thinking, and it might be something you're interested in or something you take for granted or something you don't care about at all. But I definitely think it would be worth sitting down and thinking, who are my 10 media outlets? that can actually share my work. So is it Hype Bay? Is it Dazed? Is it et cetera, et cetera? Um, you know, who are those 10 media outlets? And just find the people in that network 
that can help you share your story and just keep heading them up all the time. Just send them a little DM. You know, love what you're doing, love to, you know, be featured on their feed or in the stories or work on a collab with you. Um, you know, people are looking for content all the time. So, um, yeah, that's what I would suggest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm excited now. So thank you very much, guys. I will definitely work on that. Amazing. I can see Joyce and Calista are here. Joyce, are you, are you um, there? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually currently in VR. So I do footwear in the Gravity Sketch. And my whole story stemmed from my landfill experience in Ghana. I'm originally from Ghana, West Africa. And in 2021, I went and saw how much uh, waste was being dumped in Ghana. But it wasn't, it didn't arrive in Ghana as waste per se. It arrived as secondhand clothing that would be turned into something. But because of fast fashion, the excess amount about 70 percent of every bell that comes in ends up as waste so i started exploring that in the space of almost a digital alternative um, and created this concept of should it really exist and use the woman that was um fought against colonialism in the 1800s as my uh, muse and her boyfriend, so I, uh, the woman's called Yaz Dantua and her boo, Yao, and they fight against waste colonialism within the digital space. So I'm currently making um, shoes for them, and if I can have time to make clothes and animate them, and then also make them in physical as well, physical shoes. And yeah, it's a lot, <laughs> but that's my world. That's amazing. I can imagine that being like kind of a mix between being super distressing and super kind of like you, you've found a problem that you want to work a solution for. Um, yeah, I can imagine the visual imprint of seeing that much waste being really difficult to. Yeah. Like, yeah, that, it's a lot, isn't it? It um, is a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, and um, that's one of the things we talk about. Yeah. 
uh, and with someone like Soho House, it would be a case of on LinkedIn just looking for head of events at Dean Street or head of events at Greek Street or something. I'm not sure if it's like a different uh, events team for each house, but it wouldn't be that difficult to find, I don't think. Um, 180 would be amazing because, of course, they have a lot of different fashion brands at 180 already, but they also have Dazed Magazine as based there. Um, so 180 would probably be great, but I'm not totally sure they actually have a cinema at that one. Um, but that's one idea. Um, and then I was just going to mention with the physical shoes, there's a brilliant brand called Pet Liger, if you've seen those guys. And they've done completely digital first, and they're exploring doing physical now as well. Um, and they'll probably go down the 3D printed um, model um, route, which I think, I mean, there are quite strong sustainability aspects. Steffi, I know you just worked on a digital collection with Louise Lang, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. And uh, the thing about working with Fidget Twin, one of the reasons why I worked with them is because they are using a made-to-order service, which means it means if you, I suppose, the customers would put in their orders and you would notice exactly how much to produce, and then you could also tailor it. So if somebody's a size large or size medium, size small, you already know. And so there are other companies that do this sort of uh, made-to-order service um, in a in a web free space, which I really admire, and uh, I think it's great. I think you know having a digital first, just like with Pet Liger, with what they're doing, because what Pet Liger did with their shoes is they post constantly on Instagram. I kid you not, they post even more than me, which I don't, I have no idea how they do it, but they they post their concepts and their ideas of these three D shoes, and it looks amazing, and you know a lot of people love the idea, and you know. Mm. Once they gather the audience uh, and the people interested, which is really good, then they're going to go to the manufacturers and say, look, we've got this much of interest already and we have not even produced the shoes. So, are they, you know, so are they, sorry. Selling, are they selling it? So I, be I believe they're, they're going to make it physical. They're going to. So it's, I think they're, they're um, going to produce it. That's yeah. the idea. But I think it's, if that's the route you want to take, because you've already got the knowledge of, uh, and you've already got the contacts for someone to, to manufacture it yeah. uh, or to create it from scratch, which is great. So I think, um, yeah, I would definitely look at uh, Pet Liger. They're, they're, yeah. they're a good example. To, to yeah, I'm, I'm on their website. It's really good. Thank you. And Stephanie, there's also that amazing 3D um, printing company that do lots of kind of like batch or like custom orders for different brands, different designers. Do you know who I mean? I always forget their name. Bellafield? The one that yeah. Bellafield, exactly. Digital Twin works with. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they work with this company called Cornet, K-O-R-N-I-T. And they basically, it's a, it's a machine that uh, you can print your designs directly onto the fabric, which it saves a lot of time from you actually sourcing the fabric, and then go somewhere else to get it printed, and then go somewhere else to get it, you know, cut and sewn. So it's a, uh, uh, I would look into that if you guys are interested in getting your physical clothing, tote bags, whatever it is that is fabric based, um, manufactured and having it made to order, then um, it's at the Fashion Enter factory and the machines are called Cornet. And Joyce, I was going to say the um, person that I've been talking to at Zellerfeld is a guy called Amrit. And Amrit is like head of marketing. And because you've got such good storytelling behind your project, it's something that I would go directly to Amrit with. Um, and yeah, again, I literally just connected with him through LinkedIn. Um, I was looking for people based in the UK because I think they're mostly. Dutch. I want to say they're like in Amsterdam. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, actually, Amrit is based in London, and I think he was at like Nike or Adidas for ten years before before joining. And they're super, super getting super busy right now. Um, yeah, and I actually.
actually have there's a talk coming up that I'm doing at um, uh, an event in London. It's called New Codes. Steffi, I think you're going to be there as well. And I, it's on the 30th and the 31st of October. Are you doing your talk, Steffi, on the 30th? Which event is this? I feel like I'm not in the for the <laughs> in London? Yeah, it's the new one. It's called New Codes. Oh, no, it's not where. <laughs> isn't that where our cohorts present? I don't know. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, I was talking to Nicole and hoping yeah. that you are showing that. It'd be amazing, exactly. Um, but yeah, the talk I'm doing on the 31st is on sneakers. Um, no way! I would, Holly, I would really love to just show you the work. Um, sure. the, the interesting thing about footwear is it's um, it's a bit smoke and dagger if you haven't got out the clear parameters because of like copying from Nike and Adidas and all the high high end brands. So um, I it's, uh, I only show about the rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Joyce, um, I'm gonna find you now. Yeah. What's your handle? A Di Davis, A D D A I. I'm just I'll put it in the chat. Okay. That's my surname. Oh, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So, but this this week I've got like we've got a week for the show, and then I'll do the cinema thing early November. So I'm just going to be working on promoting it, and yeah. There's a couple of other things that were very cool, actually. You should come to the thing on the 31st because there's a guy called Sam who is part of Vans, the Vans team. Okay. Um, it sounds super random, but like, but like brands like Vans <laughs> um, do do kind of like mobile screenings. So they were touring, over the summer they were touring like a film of, that they'd made around this amazing surfer that was just a super beautiful like art piece film. Mm. Um, and, you know, it, it was kind of like part of like band's culture to showcase this movie. But they basically toured it throughout Europe um, mm -hmm. in like tiny little cinemas. So it's not good for you to say hi to. And then also Madison, who's um, she's head of collabs at Nike. She's going to be joining. Um, and then I was going to mention that the team, the Web3 team at Adidas, are also really great for you to just hook up with. Um, and, and Jenny, who's head of uh, Web3 Strategy at Adidas, is my old teammate from Rarible. Um, but they're really a nice team to work with and they're very easy to connect with. I mean, so. Uh, so I would say if you find Stacey King on LinkedIn, she's, you'll probably, if you find Stacey first, you'll then find the rest of them. Okay. I would say, but it's like the Web3 Studio. Um, yeah, especially on LinkedIn, she's like Global Senior Director, but it's just Stacey with an E, Stacey King, based in Amsterdam, yeah. Amazing, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Pleasure. And Coco has an amazing like icon for your that I can see here. Hi guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Hi, thank you. Thank you for being here today. It's been really nice to listen in on um, the conversation so far. Um, I'll, quickly, I'll quickly tell you a little bit about in my background, which um, is a bit uh, from a different place. Um, I'm I belong more uh, to traditional fashion, old school uh, fashion. A um, couple years back, uh, I had my first brand based in Los Angeles called Jacopo. Um, I designed a lot. Of, I started designing a lot of prints digitally, and then I would print them on different textiles. Really got um, experimental with those applications, um, and we hit it off really big from the beginning because we managed to get it. Uh, mainly in the music space with a lot of different DJs and performers and celebrities um, in LA and and around the world. Um, and then a couple years later, uh, I moved back to my homeland in Mexico City. Um, and a lot 
lot of things changed in a, in a really uh, drastic way. I kind of, you know, reconnected to um, my home soil and uh, and that had a big shift in the identity of, of and the nature of the project that I now wanted to craft. Um, so it's been a few years since then of recalibration and I'm about to launch a new brand of my own uh, called Cincio, spelled T-Z-I-N-T-Z-I-O. Um, still, you know, rooted in, in print uh, experimentation, my own digital prints. Um, I work with a material um, uh, from Japan uh, called Bemberg, which comes from uh, regenerated, upcycled uh, cotton lint or waste. Um, I then take that and I manufacture in Istanbul in Turkey. Uh, I love working with Turkish people. Um, and I work also with Turkey because some of the some of the mills that I partner with have the highest environmental uh, standards that I've seen around the world. Um, and they also do a fantastic job with cutting and sewing. Um, and so I'm about to launch this uh, in the next coming weeks. And I have some other collections lined up um, that um, really lend themselves to start playing um, in the digital spectrum, um, mainly through storytelling. And I'm also really interested in um, diving into blockchain and seeing what that can provide in terms of supply chain transparency for my garments. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm more new to the digital space and part of being here is just meeting digital natives, digital creators that uh, I can collaborate with uh, as well. Mexico City right now is, is flourishing with uh, a lot of different um, mediums and applications, whether it's you know performance art, music, uh, gallery spaces, and uh, people are doing a lot of really cool things. Part of what I wanna do is really you know, uh, experiences in person. Um, and a lot of my narrative is really ecologically driven. So a lot of pieces out in nature, um, but I definitely want to, you know, start meshing that uh, with digital applications as well. Um, and just seeing where that takes me. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit of what I'm doing. When you were talking, Coco, just at the end, that was making me think about Jacques Mus for some reason. Um, I suppose it's because you're painting such an incredible picture of Mexico City, and I was thinking about all the incredible food and the amazing restaurants, etc. And the fact that you were talking about like like experiences, in-person experiences, and traceability and materials. Um, and I wonder whether that uh, could be an interesting way to kind of like grow your brand and grow your um, community um, through very like, it, they could be very small. I just, I've done this in really impactfully in, in the past, um, you know, just doing very small dinners for groups of artists and um, like-minded folk, um, creating that kind of like community of cross-conversation um for people to kind of like it feels like what you're creating is gonna like really ripple out um and i just i think that's there could be something very sort of beautiful in creating these moments of in-person connection in mexico city given that you're kind of like you're coming back to that as a place that's given you so much now um and I, I wonder, have you thought about how you're, like, anything like that, creating, like, small gatherings, or is that something you've done in the past with your other brands? I know you were talking about music and working with different DJs and things. Yes, uh, in the past, uh, mainly in Los Angeles, um, we, we basically threw a lot of parties, uh, but nothing really, um, you know, we, we brought together different uh, artists and, and the different pop-ups, different spaces, and brought in different DJs, but nothing that, you know, new. Um, now what I'm working on for spring of next year, um, the collection that I'm releasing has to do with prints that are my own um, ecological exploration of precise ecosystems. Um, and this main one has to do with a, vol a volcanic narrative that's evolved uh, 
in the Valley of Mexico. Um, so I actually want to present that uh, collection in, in the crater of a, of a little volcano that's outside of the city and oh, take, nice. you know, take a handful of people, uh, oh, like 30 nice. people, bust them out. And yeah. Because, because the community in Mexico City, and I'm sure it's the same, you know, uh, elsewhere, I know it is. Um, a lot of, um, it, it's, it's a massive city, but the, the fashion community is actually quite close. So yeah. when you do things like that, it really does help and it nurtures and it and and it, it helps you know it helps it spread organically too and find yeah. its roots here. Are you talking to any partners about collaborations again? Any brand partners? Because I'm sure I could imagine even just you giving me a, you know a few words like a tequila brand would be absolutely beside themselves to collaborate with you and create like digital drone footage of that being presented in the crater of a volcano it's like so perfect for um something really really beautiful on film i think um yeah mainly in terms of partnerships and collaborations um as of now it's mainly with other creators um <laughs> For example, there's a lot of really great filmmakers here in Mexico. A good friend of mine just released a film called Gods of Mexico. His name's El Mundo Santos. And he's, um, in terms of photography, he, he has brilliant photography. And, 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 and that's, I think, um, we were set on him, you know, photographing that campaign there. Um, and it's a very analog in nature, but um, I think it lends itself perfectly, um, and and as well, there's um, um, architects around uh, that are really uh, focused on bringing back, you know, uh, the pre-Hispanic, the ancestral uh, lines and uh, infrastructure um, that have also offered to, to help, you know, find spaces and create the experience, lending technology instruments. Um, that, that's very much in the immediate. Um, in terms of, uh, we've done collaborations before, uh, but in terms of uh, brands, um, in the future, I don't know, expanding beyond uh, what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm also really into rock climbing, so I, I want to get uh, in touch with brands like uh, uh, Scarpa and, and La Sportiva because I want to do uh, really intersectional uh, collaborations that uh, showcase like a more romantic side to rock climbing and uh, instead of like the more nerdy techie side that's often seen like you know in, in the US. Um, I, was yeah, gonna, I was gonna ask Steffi, what's been your experience Steffi of working with brands and collaborating with brands? It's been quite interesting because I feel like I've worked with more brands that are not fashion brands, official fashion. And a lot more tech brands actually. So the brands that I have worked with in digital fashion off the top of my head are Snapchat, uh, Dell, Gucci, Glenn Fittich, so Glenn Fittich is a whiskey brand, Gucci fashion brand, Dell technology, and Snapchat technology. And I'm currently working um, also with an automotive company and another technology brand so actually i'm feeling like the people that are are taking the risk for digital fashion have a good usually have a good understanding of tech that's what i'm getting from it so i i would love to work with more physical fashion brands but i just haven't had that opportunity given yet i would say that that's really interesting because that's kind of where i was leaning towards as well is that this idea that you know, a collaboration would be with like another fashion brand partner. There is actually so much creative scope to work with, like uh, drinks brands, for instance. Um, I've done quite a lot with Bombay Sapphire in the past, and they're all part of the Bacardi Group, um, and they were amazing to work with. But they do have very different networks within different territories. So, like my network in London wouldn't necessarily be the right team or anything to speak to about anything happening in Mexico but just from my experience I think and tequila being such a, a huge um, industry at the moment in particular um, I think there's a lot of opportunity 
opportunity to like take a constructive project and take it to a few different either marketing agencies so branding agencies like Ogilvy for instance they do all the um, uh, marketing for Bacardi or take it directly to each of the, the different houses um, but you just need to do it in plenty of time they do tend to plan very far in advance so if you're planning that's going to be your spring collection did you say go go yes Yes, and, yeah. and you are uh, very on um, tequila and mezcal brands tend to be very experience oriented. There's a very big festival here called Mezcal Amores. They're good friends of mine. Um, they invite me to do pop ups and, and things of that nature. Um, and there's always, you know, the, the, the tequila and mezcal brands are always doing really cool things, um, really great ideas. I'd like to just take the opportunity to say, because I've, I've a lot of my fellow residents and that I've, that I've been you know hearing over the past few weeks if, if i can lend any help or a helping hand in terms of turning the digital to the physical um and I, if i can help with that in any way um please you know feel free to reach out to me i have experience working with manufacturers overseas and uh, the whole you know uh, sample pattern making process in the physical um so yeah that's i just wanted to leave that there as well that's super, super generous. That's very cool. I love that kind of sharing of skill sets. Um, it's likely that there's just a, one a huge collective of incredible like talent in this room right now, even. Um, I would also just want to add quickly, Coco, in terms of like your material, because you're already thinking about that amazing Bemba material. And this might just be helpful for anyone else thinking about reaching out to brands like whether it's tequila or um, they will then want to see what's the connection with the product. So for someone like Coco, you might think, okay, how do I do something with agave? Am I doing something where I'm taking leaf and like, you know, is, it, is that physical to digital? I'm sure you've kind of had similar experience, Steffi, where they're wanting to connect the physical product that they have to that creative process. And, and, and show something digitally. Um, I know we don't have very long left. We were technically supposed to finish at three, but I know Kay and Selena are here. Shall we just have a very quick chat with you guys, if that's cool? Are you there, Kay? Hi, yeah, I think Selena was up first, though, um, but I'm happy to go first. Uh, Hi, thank fine. You. Oh. Sorry, thank you. Um, yeah, it's been so great uh, listening to you, Holly. Thank you so much. Um, just quickly, yeah, and Stiffy, of course, I hope you're well, um, it's so nice to see you here, and yeah, um, just quickly about myself, I guess, I come from a traditional fashion background, and I did six, no, more than eight years in musical theatre, so I did sort of costuming and designing and sort of dressing, that sort of like whole umbrella under costuming, and towards my one of my last years, I was designing for one of the shows, and through the sort of um, how um, creating and sort of designing costumes and how sort of time consuming it is, I started researching sort of ways to do it better and more um, efficiently. And that's sort of how I fell into digital fashion and how much more potential I found from it and how exciting it was. But I'm actually living in Tokyo and there's actually no information at all in Japanese. So having, uh, being able to speak English, I was able to sort of start researching. And at the time, of course, like you, Steffi, had your Twitch streams going on. And I think right after that, uh, the Fabricant also started doing something similar. And so I started my journey from there, but sort of really interested in sort of building like a Japanese um, digital fashion community is sort of where my passion lies and so from there I started working with brands like The Fabricant and sort of furthering my education and over the past probably like two or three months I've started sort of exploring the potential of being a creator myself so I'm still very new to it but and also sort of still looking for my sort of niche and my sort of voice but being a part of this cohort and sort of seeing everyone's work I've been able to sort of 
figure out, at least for now, that sort of using AI and gen art as tools has sort of been uh, become my niche, I guess. And I think I've started sort of finding my voice. So that's kind of like a nutshell of me. I probably like skipped through that. But yeah. Um. I was going to ask Steffi, what, in terms of your experience of um, kind of like finding your voice, because you'd come from like other disciplines and arrived in fashion space, and it's been a combination of all of your different experiences. How did you kind of like start to like grow your confidence around um, the work that you were creating? Yeah, first of all, hi Kate, it's so good to see you. Um, you have come to my streams before, so uh, I know who you are, and it's great to see a familiar name in this cohort. Um, I totally relate, um, yeah, about finding yourself, you know, finding yourself as not just as a digital fashion artist, but as a creative in general, because there is no rule and it really sucks. Because um, I remember when I used to be in the 3D uh, motion design community, uh, back then I had no style of my own I was just like I was copying trending aesthetics and visuals that I thought were really cool on Instagram and I would be you know trying to create my own spin on them but in the end it just looked like a poor copy of somebody else's work and um you know that, that's fine I think having inspiration because at the end of the day being a creative we get inspiration from what we see what we experience um I think the huge part of that is uh going to the next level of actually finding your style yourself is is it's actually within you it's within you already it's already your interest it's already what you believe in your values it's just bringing that out and just repetition repetition uh, repetition because uh, people say that you know your reputation is actually just you being repetitive and being uh, what is that word you do it all the time and you show up and you create your own work and you will actually start the more work that you produce the more that you will see uh, and you will figure out what types of things that you like. So, okay, if, if generating digital fashion by AI is the most fun for you, you really enjoy it, if that's your thing, like keep doing it. And then I would add, you know, you don't have to always be stuck with just one thing. You can always implement other aspects into it. Maybe you want to, like, use AI and then maybe in the future you want to add some animation to it or you know you want to create it in as a digital avatar and, and you know use that as inspiration to create something else so I think it's, it's super interesting because people ask you know how do you find your style but it's you and that's what I love about digital fashion is that you just really need to um, look at yourself and maybe even just write on a piece of paper the top three things that you really like to do and it's usually an amalgamation of those three that will that will embody your style that's amazing advice Steffi <laughs> it's and it's totally relevant to everyone right um I hope that was helpful Kay hearing from us um and then we're just going to chat with Celine Shen quickly and then I think we have to jump if that's okay Yes. Um, hi, I'm Celine Chen. I'm a fashion designer, but also an artist. I have a physical background and uh, I study also choreography in Bruxelles. Um, I just finished a collection uh, for robots um, during uh, the Paris Fashion Week. And I'm, I, I like to work on uh, digital fashion and art because it helps me to build some concept and to make some communication about my works and to, to other people um, and to also uh, to build worlds uh, in a more creative way. So, yeah, that's all. I was just looking for your work, Celine. I can see her. Oh, it's amazing. I, I used to work with scientific laboratories or companies. 
so we can like share some expertise and um, if there is no like um, like um, how um, how to say it like um, economical um, uh, aspect yeah to work, but it's really an artistic project yeah um, what was kind of uh, difficult is I had to program the robots and also to make the choreography of the dancers and dress them both. And um, it was kind of a um, weird experience because I had this robot like three weeks uh, at my place and um, it's, it's a relation with machine that uh, is, yeah, that goes beyond the language and it's, there is a kind of sensitive approach um, that is really interesting with human and non-human. And I would like to explore more this dimension in the future. So you are literally living with those robots in your, in your apartment? Uh, three weeks. Now I, I give it back, but I was really sad at the end of the experience. That's very easy. So, are you based in Paris, Celine? Yes, I'm based in Paris. Yeah, so you're literally in the perfect place to be like exploring, like a cross between fashion and art and installation and digital um, it, like experiences. Right, yes. No, that's super cool. I love it. Um, I'm sure, like, Nicole has been able to give you lots of kind of thoughts around um, different kind of, like, art opportunities. Is there anything that comes to mind for you, Steffi, in terms of Celine's work, um, crossing, like, more that sort of fine art space with fashion? What is your Instagram? Because I would love to check it out. Uh, it's Celine Chen on the slash official. Yeah, it's Celine.Shen, isn't it? Celine.Shen underscore official. It's very, um, there's, a, it, there's a real filmic quality to your work as well, Celine, isn't there? Yes. Uh, it's, yeah, it's incredible. It's really, really beautiful. It really is that kind of, I think lots of brands are really trying to like understand how to do this. So they're kind of, they're interested in digital fashion, but they want to make it physical. They can't help but want it to be physical because they still want to really bring people into their physical stores and into their physical environments. So I think the way that you're working is actually very clever because it's almost like you're giving them exactly what they want. You know, if, if you do want to go down a brand, um, a brand route. Um, but if, if, if that were the case, the, the types of people that I'd be looking to reach out to would be um, kind of the visual merchandisers. So it would be the teams that kind of like create the installations for the windows. So like at Louis Vuitton, for instance, mm -hmm. um, Faye McLeod and her team do the windows globally um natasha davis at fendi um looks at all the kind of like visual identity again it's they are they t tend to be like global teams that are either based in paris or milan or rome um, but those those uh schemes are ro rolled out across their stores globally so it is kind of one of the 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 sort of rarer uh, areas for how art can be seen in stores that can actually really be more about the art than the product. Um, the product can be in there somewhere. Um, but those are the kind, I think that visual merchandise team, like networking, could be really interesting for you, Celine. Okay. Yeah, I just looked at your work, Celine. It, I've never seen anything like this before, so this is really exciting me. Um, I guess, I mean, Holly, you said it all, really. I think um, your advice is probably best than mine, but in terms of what you're saying about focusing more on the art and yeah, like, right. the fashion. Um, because um, yeah. I, I have the philosophy that the, the garments is something 
but can goes be like can can goes beyond economical aspects. And when I study fashion in Paris, I wanted to explore the invisible dimension of the clothes. So I thought that the virtual could help me on that. And I I wrote like a kind of manifest of in um, yeah, a manifest with um, different way to look at the garments and how uh, in our mod they can reconsider the clothes uh, from the history, the, the, me the memories and into a more anthropological aspects. So I, I focus my intention to develop the garment as an art piece more than a product of consummation. Yeah, I, I love that. I think there is definitely space for that thought and it also really aligns well with digital fashion. And mm -hmm. I think the way that you connect robotics to it and art, I think that's really clever. I think, you know, having it interactive, but also having a thought piece behind it to make people think deep on a deeper level about what fashion could be is super mm -hmm. eye opening. So I would definitely carry on doing what you're doing. And I'm very excited to see where you're going to head next with it. And Thank you so much. There's a couple of brands that sort of sprang to mind that I think would be really interesting to reach out to. And I would say just like, for instance, if your dream is to work with Hermes, don't ever give up. Like there's so many different teams within an organization like Hermes you know if you speak to the Hermes lab team and that doesn't go anywhere speak to the visual team speak to the marketing team speak to all of them they definitely don't speak to each other it's amazing I always am so surprised that you know I work with one team in Burberry and they'll be working on gaming and they haven't spoken to the team in marketing at all like <laughs> It's a real, it's a surprise. But I did notice, for instance, um, you know, obviously I think Margela could be super interesting for your work. Um, mm -hmm. There's another new brand that I saw in Paris that was all about deconstructed. Um, it was almost like a Lego kind of way of putting pieces yes. and garments together. Mm -hmm. I can't, can't remember what they were called. Um, and then obviously Caperni, I think, could be super interesting because uh, they're already looking at robotics and you know what's that conversation um, nice. yeah I would I would definitely be thinking about you know presenting yourself to some of these different teams and looking for those types of art more art focused collaboration um, and just, just take one thing at a time it you know it is always about the process it's not about you know where do we actually want to go with this it, it you know it's about a journey so i just think stepping stones and you know making those new connections is going to be super exciting so i'm looking forward to seeing that one too um but thank you every so much all of you and thank you to miss Cole for inviting us thank you so much steffi for joining me and being my my co co-host co-chair um, and Linda for facilitating. Um, it's been brilliant. Really, really fantastic. Thank you very much for staying for extra time after um, our allotted one hour. Uh, thank you very much both for coming to this AMA and thank you everyone for being here. Bye-bye.